Hello and welcome to the demo. This demo shows you how to deploy your VMware Software Defined Data Center on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure and then integrate with the other Oracle services running on Oracle Cloud. The base configuration includes three Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, Compute Bare Metal Host, which is VM.DensiU 2.52, which can scale up to 64 hosts in the single Oracle Cloud VMware solution STDC. The base configuration includes 156 OCPUs, 2304 GB of physical memory, and 153 terabyte of NVMe-based raw storage. The solution includes VMware software such as vSphere, vSAN, NSXT, HCX, and vCenter server. The vSAN converged storage technology ensures the availability of data and replicates the data across all the bare metal hosts. Some of the prerequisites to host the SCDC are the user should have the privileges to deploy the bare metal computer instances and to create or update VCNs. Your tenancy should have access to at least three VM.DanceIO 2.52 shape computer instances in a single availability domain. You need to either create a virtual cloud network or you can use an existing VCN to deploy the SCDC. We recommend using a VCN with an IP address side size of class 20. To run the SDDC. A CIDR block for VMware workload that doesn't overlap with the VCN CIDR is also required. Also, make sure that you check for the service limits for ESXi and SDDC count in your tenancy. To get started with the Oracle Cloud VMware solution, you need to create a VCN or use an existing VCN to deploy the SDDC. If you plan to use an existing VCN, we recommend using one with an IP address CIDR size of Last 22 available for running the SDDC. The CIDR is divided into nine segments to use for the provisioning subnet and eight VLANs. As a part of SDDC provisioning, these network segments are created for various VMware functionalities. These network segments ensure appropriate traffic segregation. To get started, log into your OCI tenancy and open the navigation menu by clicking on the hamburger icon. On the top left of the screen and in the solutions and platform click on VMA solution from the compartment drop down on the left side of the screen select the compartment where you wish to deploy the solution and click on create the stdc button enter a descriptive name for the stdc select the compartment and you have an option to select the Enable HCX checkbox. This will install the HCX plugin, and please note that you cannot install this plugin once the SDDC is created. And I'll be enabling HCX for this demo. And if you have enabled HCX, an additional route rule is created to allow the traffic from the HPF VLAN to the NAT gateway. And I've chosen the version of the bundled VMware software that you want to install on the SXI host. I'm going to select the latest version here. Now we enter the number of ESXi host to create in the SDC. This number has to be at least 3 and can be at most 64. And I'll be choosing 3 for this demo purpose. Now provide the SSH keys that will be used for the SSH connections to the ESXi host. Finally, select the availability domain where you would like to deploy your OCVS and click on Next. On the SDC networks page, you have to select the vision you wish to create the STDC on. I have already created a vision called as OCVS demo 8 with a side block of 10.8.0.0/16 for this demo purpose. And please make sure that your vision side block doesn't overlap with the other vision. And I'm gonna select the vision that we have created for the for our demo purpose. And if you have enabled HCX, the selected vision must have a NAT gateway attached to it. If a NAT gateway already exists for the vision, the name the compartment and the public IP address information would be displayed. And if there is no NAT gateway attached to the selected vision, this workflow creates one for you. Now provide a name for the NAT gateway. I have an option to select the existing subnet and VLANs, but I'll choose the default option of creating new subnet and VLANs for this demo purpose. Next, I have to provide the STDC CIDR range. The STDC management CIDR is divided into nine segments. One for the provisioning subnet and eight for the VLANs. I'll use the CIDR block of 10.8.0.0 slash 22 here 
and clicking on check availability will help to ensure that the selected CIDR block is available for the VCN. Once the SDDC CIDR is verified, provide the SDDC workload CIDR block. The CIDR block provides the IP address in the SDDC to be used by the VMware VMs to run the workload. The value must be slash 30 or larger and must not overlap with the PC inside a block. We recommend using a side block of size slash 24 for workload network. And I'll be entering 172.0.0.0 slash 24. Click on next to review a summary of the settings for creating the SDDC. If everything is correct, click on create SDDC. And once you submit the job, the sub summary page tells you that the SDDC creation request has been initiated and shows the processing status of each resource. And the SDDC should be up and running in roughly three hours if you have selected HCX plugin and it should take two and a half hours if you have not enabled the HCX plugin. And once it is active, click on the SDDC just created to monitor the progress of the SDDC creation. Once the SDDC processing request is started, open the navigation menu by clicking on the hamburger menu icon on the top left of the screen. Go to the networking and select virtual cloud networks. We will now create a public subnet in the same region as the SDDC to host a Bassington server. We will need this jump server to access the SDDC. From the resources panel on the left, choose subnet and click on create subnet. Give the subnet a name. And provide a site range with a minimum size of slash 30 and i'll be choosing 10.8.10.0 slash 24. leave all other options as default click on create subnet button you should now be able to see the created public subnet now that we have created the public subnet we need to provide internet access for both the subnets we have in our in our vcn to provide the internet access for the subnet, we shall create the internet gateway. From the resources section on the left of the page, select internet gateway. Click on create internet gateway button. Provide a name for your internet gateway and compartment for the internet gateway and hit the create internet gateway button. We will now modify the route rules for the public subnet to direct the traffic through the internet gateway that you just created. From the resources section on the left side of the page, click on subnet. From the list, select the public subnet. Click on the link to the associate, associated route table in the panel at the top. Click on the add route rules button. Select the target type as uh, internet gateway. Set the destination cider block as all zeros and choose the internet gateway that you just created as the target internet gateway thereafter click on add route rules now we shall add route rules to provide the internet access for our private subnet click on the route tables from the resources section and uh, select the route table for nsx edge uh, uplink one now click on add rules and uh, select the target type as that gateway Enter the destination side of block has all zeros and select the target NAT gateway which was created at the time of STD creation and click on add route rules table changes. Now click on add route rules again and select the target type as private IP. Enter the workload CIDR as a destination CIDRs. And in the target selection, enter the NSX Edge IP address and click on Add Route Rules. Now that we have added the route rules, we shall create the Bastion host. Now that we have the public and private subnet created with the route tables attached, create the Bastion host. Return to the navigation menu and under Core Infrastructure, click on Compute and then on Instances. On the Instances page, click on Create Instance button. On the Create Compute Instance page, enter the name of the virtual instance and select the compartment. Select the AD where the instance will be provisioned. 
click on change image and we will use the Windows Server 2016 standard image for this machine. Now click on change shape and select a VM standard 2.1 for your compute instance. Now select the same region that was used for creating the STDC. Select a public subnet and select assign a public IPv4 address so that a public IP is assigned to the virtual machine. Click on create button. Upon the creation of this instance, a username and an initial password will be generated for you. They will be available on the detailed screen of the newly launched instance. You also must create a new password upon logging into the instance for the first time. Once the instance is provisioned, we will now open port 3389 in the security list attached to the public subnet which will allow remote desktop connection. Go to the navigation menu under core infrastructure, choose networking and click on virtual cloud networks. Select your vision from the given list. And from the resource section on the left side of the page, click on security list. Click on the default security list for the VCN as it was the one that we attached to our public subnet. Click on add ingress rules button and enter all zeros in the source side section. And select RDP TCP slash 3389. The destination port range will get auto populated with port number 3389. Now click on add ingress rule. The bastion host is now ready to accept remote desktop connections. Once the instance is created, we will connect to the bastion host. Open the navigation menu and click on compute and click on instances. Select the instance which you just created and copy the public IP address. Connect to the instance using a remote desktop connection. I'll be using RDP since I'm on a Windows machine. Take a note of the username and password since you want to connect them with these credentials. Now we will go to the page of our STDC and we will copy the vSphere client we sent the server URL. Open the Internet Explorer and once it is opened, paste the vSphere client URL and hit enter. Here you will get a warning for the unprotected access. Click on continue to this website. And now click on launch PHP client. Copy the vCenter server username and password. And now enter the password and click on login. You should now be able to access the vCenter server. From here, you can manage the VMware environment. And if you look at the panel on the left, you should be able to see the backend host used for the environment.